All right, hi everyone. Today I'm going to be telling you about a new product I've just put out on Gumroad called Procedural Patterns for Blender. And this is basically just a collection of different node groups which will let you generate different white on black masks for helping you create your own procedural materials. So for example here, I've got a dirt grunge node which is plugged in here and you can see how I can change the scale and it basically just generates this nice procedural pattern. So there's a variety of different things like core sticks which you can animate, different kinds of lines for different angles of axes, as well as different types of imperfections like just regular grungy splotches or maybe even different types of scratches. And again, each of these has different parameters you can customize. Now the reason I've made this pack is because I want something that will help me to make more procedural material packs in the future like modular metals. But I thought I might as well just share these with other people as well. So now available for you to download for a few dollars. But I didn't just want to turn this video into one big advertisement, so I'm going to show you how to make a complex procedural material using these node groups. Specifically, this is the material I'm going to show you how to make. So we have this variety of imperfection effects with different splotches and scratches, and depending on the shape of the mesh, so the curvature, the ambient occlusion, there's going to be variable roughness. So you can see here in the crevices, it's kind of more muted and then it gets shinier as it comes out. And then along the edges, just to show you how to grab different edge masks, there's this almost carbon fibery line effect going on. So it's not necessarily a realistic material, but I just thought it'd be an interesting demonstration to show you how to combine masks to make interesting procedural materials. And of course, you don't necessarily have to use my node groups for this. You can replace them with any kind of procedural node combinations you like. So we're going to start from something very basic here. So I've just got my template mesh with a very mid gray color. The metallic is turned all the way up and the roughness is just at a mid value, but we're going to be changing the roughness a lot with our procedural nodes. The different node groups I've chosen from my procedural patterns pack are Imperfection Splotch. This is what it looks like. Like. So you can see we have these kind of like cloudy detailed areas with all these different circular splotches in between. Then we have the Lines X node group. I quite like this one, although it's a bit weird on my eyes. You can get all kinds of weird stylized patterns with this one, which is why I like it. But you can also distort it using the values and I can imagine all sorts of weird artwork being made with that. Then we have Dirt Complex and when you look at this, it looks like that there's some normal data going on because we have these areas of brightness contrasted immediately by darkness and when you have like bright and dark areas like that, it makes it look like there's some depth there. But of course there's no normal data whatsoever, it's all just white on black masking. So that's why it's called Dirt Complex because the visual style of it is much more complex than just a regular generator texture. Of course we can change the values of this as well, so we can change the scale to whatever we want and also change the detail level so you can get like some very different effects going but i'm going to leave that on six and five and then the last node group I'm going to use is Scratch's Hair. So there's a few different types of scratch patterns in this pack, and this one's called Scratch's Hair because these scratches remind me more of the shape of hair. Might sound a bit stupid, but that's how I remember these. So again, we can change the scale, change the detail level of these scratches. And the thing about this node group is it has different layers of scratches you can add on. And I need to give a shout out to Charon from Just 3D Things who helped me massively with setting up this node group. In fact, this one was first used in the Modular Metals pack. Anyway, so the first thing we're going to do is try and create our general general imperfection effect, which is going to go entirely over the surface. So we're going to combine the dirt complex with the scratches to create a roughness mask. Before we do that, I'm just going to set these values to what I like. So 9.9, 0, 1, and the rest is fine. Okay, so one thing I like to do with these masks is get some intensity control from them. So the way we do this is by making a math node. And if I plug it in right afterwards and set it to multiply, we can multiply the strength of this mask quite easily. So it's just one value to control its intensity. Technically speaking, I could add these into the node groups and I might do that in the future, but for now I think it's just nice to show you that you can multiply the mask by a single value. So it's a very easy way to control how strong it is. I'm going to set this one to 2 because I like it being quite strong and I'm going to make another one of these nodes for the dirt complex. So if we plug that in, I actually want this one to be a bit weaker than 2, but I think it'll be important to balance these together. So we're going to make a mix RGB node and combine these. So plugging the dirt into color 1 and these scratches into color 2 then plugging that into our color. And then here we can see them together. So by adjusting the factor value here for the mix, we can choose which one we want to prioritize more. I'm going to set that to about 0.85 and you could continue balancing the values from here, but I like this for our roughness map because these scratches should take priority, I think. They're probably the newest part of the imperfection. If we plug this into the roughness value of the principal BSDF shader now, then you can see this in effect. Now, because it's basically just black on white, we are kind of using extreme roughness values. So that's why it's super reflective in the areas where it's not imperfect. But I quite like this so far because you can see how we have the scratches going along the surface and this dirty effect almost like someone's left some fingerprints on it. But I really don't like how reflective it is, and one way to remedy this is just to add some value to the roughness. So another math node, add that in here, and you can see that if we change this now, then we basically have an extra control over this reflectivity. I'm going to set that to 0.21. 
So right now we've just created a procedural hard surface imperfection effect. I should also note as well that the texture coordinate input I'm using is object for each of these. Well okay, so we've got imperfections going, but what now? Well, I'm thinking that I want to add some dirt in between the crevices here. So where the meshes are coming together, I want to make a bit of a grunge effect. Now if you've seen any of my content on materials before, you know that obviously the way that we capture that is with the ambient occlusion data. So we're going to make an ambient occlusion node and a color ramp to restrict those values. So let's plug the AO into the factor input there and plug the color of the ramp into the color of our material. So this would be a good way to visualize the mask being made. So as I move the black color handle of the color ramp up, you can see that we're getting the shadowing data in between these meshes. But the thing is, when we're using masks, white usually represents where something should be, and black usually represents where something shouldn't be. Unless you're using the opposite mixing modes, but we're not really going to go into that. So in this case, I want white to be where I want the grunge to be, and black to be where it shouldn't be. So we need to invert the color ramp here. So if I press this drop down arrow on the color ramp, I can press flip color ramp. And to be honest, this still isn't what I want. So I'm just going to move the black over here and white kind of here. And we can tighten up these values. I just want this mask to be where I want the grunge to happen. So here we go. The shadowing areas are now just white. So this is our AO mask. Now we know that when we create our grunge pattern, we want to mix it with this AO mask. And we'll do that with a mix RGB node. So I'll place that down now. And our AO mask is basically going to be the factor input for this because we're almost always plugging masks into the factor inputs of nodes. And then if I plug this into the base color now, we can just play around with these values and you can see that we now have separate control over like the main body of the mesh and where the AO mask is going on. So we could change the color and do anything we like with that. I suppose that's a pretty cool stylized result if you want to run away with that as well. A bit of kind of iridescence going on. But anyway, no, let's make the um, the grunge mask. So if I bring my imperfection splodge node over, I'm going to plug this into the color so we can see what's going on. Okay, so we have a pattern, but I want to make this dirty. So we need to recolor it. So there's a few ways you could do that. You could place a mix RGB node, set it to the color, mix value, and then plug something else in there. They'll basically take the white values and then recolor them. But another way you can do it again is just by using a color ramp, nice and simple. So if we plug that here in between, then if I move these values and change their color, you can see that we can basically recolor the pattern. Now, a tip I'll give is that for doing grunge effects, you'd think that going from dark to light would make sense because you're basically changing the different layers of muck where the older layers are darker and the newer layers are brighter. But sometimes it actually looks good to do dark, then bright and then dark again. And I'll show you what I mean here. So we're going to go for like a bit of a dark brownie color. And I'm going to try and match that on the other side again. By the way, if you hover over a color value and press E, you can get the eyedropper tool and then you can capture color from anywhere else in Blender. But then here I'm going to go for something a bit paler. So if we zoom into this and look close up at our mesh, we can see that we're getting this kind of weird dirty pattern going on. And I like these rings here because it looks like water has dropped with dirt and then the dirt has moved to the edges and then the water's evaporated. So I'm just going to add some extra values here to kind of balance that out. And I think that's quite an interesting grungy effect. Now it looks a bit weird on here because we're previewing this material with the extreme metallic roughness. So if I unplug that, we can see it a bit better here. So now what we need to do is just restrict these to the areas where the crevices form. So I'm going to leave the roughness unplugged for a sec and let's plug our new grunge mask into the color two value of our mix RGB for the AO mask. And then I'm going to plug this into the color. And then here we go. You can kind of see here now that the grunge is now generating in between the shadowy areas. And now we can control the basic color value for the rest of the mesh. So I'm going to set this down to a mid gray again, somewhere around here. And then we can continue working on the rest of our shader. But also I should make a note that because this is all procedural, we can change the influence of the AO mask here as well. So if you want to make it a bit more of a subtle effect, then you can move these color ramp values and tie them up and do whatever you like. So maybe I'll actually move the blank value all the way to the edge here, just to give us more of a softer gradient going along the object. And if we take a look at this here, here we go, kind of basic colory grungy material. But we can make this a lot more complex. So let's plug the roughness back in. And now you can see that we have our imperfection effects and our grunge coming in. But this looks a bit weird because the grunge is quite dark. And part of the reason for that is because it's very reflective because it's adopting the roughness value that we've created from our procedural masks here. So what we have here is roughness data being generated from our original masks. And we have this grunge mask being generated here. And we want to reduce the roughness using these masks where the crevices are present. So let's do that now. 
So we know that we're going to need a mix RGB node to mix this up. And I'm going to take the ambient occlusion mask and pass that to the factor input because obviously we want to use the AO mask to change the roughness value in the crevices exactly where the grunge is placed. So we're using that as the factor. Then I'm going to plug our original roughness into color one. And we're going to plug this into the roughness again just to see how this looks. And I think that's not too bad. Basically, you can start to see a gradient where the roughness is going from a kind of low to high intensity or a high to low, depending on how you want to see roughness. But as we change our second color value, value here, you can see how the intensity changes. Again, we can also go back to our color ramp for the AO and change the black handle. And you can just about see, if you look carefully here, watch this area where the gradient happens, that as I change the black handle, the roughness gradient becomes more intense. So it's becoming less reflective and then becoming more reflective. So I'm going to set that to a white value because I want to make the effect quite intense. So we know that we're getting a much more muted reflection in between the crevices here. And I think this is starting to look quite nice as a material. But I still think it looks a bit odd because we have this kind of high frequency pattern going on and it sort of just disappears into nowhere and doesn't really have much of an influence over the roughness elsewhere. So it kind of feels like we have two juxtaposed materials going on. So I actually want to still make use of this pattern, this grunge pattern, and have it affect the rest of the roughness over the surface. The way I'm going to do this is make another mix node, but I'm going to use the imperfection splotch mask as the factor input this time. We're going to take our new roughness and plug it into the color one and if I plug this into our roughness you can now see that the grunge pattern that we've created is now affecting the roughness as well. Now this looks really cool close up and we can also change the value for this. So if I change it from white to black, we can kind of inverse the effect that it has by adding or taking away from the roughness. But I'm going to balance it out a bit more so it's more of a subtle effect. Now, the reason I like doing this is because it kind of helps to blend together the grunge pattern we had inside with the rest of the material. So I think we're going to go for a kind of subtle mid gray, but it's up to you whether you want it to add to the reflection or take away from the reflection. Both make sense and both would make an interesting material. I think I'm going to have it kind of add to the reflection a little bit so we get these kind of darker areas but again that's a completely artistic choice that's up to you so this is what our material looks like so far and I really like this because we have this color variety we've got these scratches going on depending on the angle of the camera we have these darker areas and I think this is looking quite nice okay so I'm going to do a bit of material organization at the moment so I'm going to add a frame and put our ambient occlusion stuff into this over here so we know that's one section of the material and I'm going to make another frame and put our imperfection stuff over here. So let me just label these quickly. Imperfection, and this one should be grunge, I think. And then for these mixed shader nodes, we are using these ones to balance roughness. So obviously things get a bit messy with all the node wires going around, but if you've been following the video all the way up until this point, then hopefully this still makes sense. But now the last thing I want to do is show you how to get edge data and we're going to put that line effect in like that kind of carbon fiber line going now so far we've been using procedural patterns from my new procedural patterns pack which is a paid pack on gumroad but i do have a free pack as well called node group tools and this has a collection of different useful node groups for doing different things in the shader editor but one of the nodes i like in particular is the get edges nodes because it really simplifies how to get edge masks for objects this is different from the ambient occlusion node so i can demonstrate this if i add a get edges node and then plug this into the Base color but make sure the invert value is down then we can see that we have a white on black edge mask for the mesh so now because we have this mask we can isolate where to do edge wearing effects now you'll notice that the edge mask does also get the data inside of crevices if you wanted you could mix the ambient occlusion with this get edges node to reduce the edge mask in those areas but i'm not going to overcomplicate things for this video so we're just going to leave it as it is by changing the radius value on this as well you can also tighten up how you want the edge mask to look i'm going to put it on about 0.4 383, I think, because that's a kind of nice one third of the way value. So we have our get edges node, and I'm going to bring down our lines x node. So again, just to remind you, this is what that effect looks like. So we now want to combine these lines with this edge mask. So those lines only appear along the edges. Obviously, as you should know by now, we're going to be using a mix RGB node for that. But before we do that, I'm going to actually mute out these line values. So I'm going to make a color ramp and I'm going to actually swap these around. Although it doesn't really matter. You can kind of do what you want. If you want white on black or black on white and just change the color handles however you like. Again, it's artistic choice. But I'm going to then make this a bit brighter. So the values aren't too dissimilar, but it's because when we're adding it to the roughness, we don't want it to be a super strong effect, just something a bit subtle. So of course, now I'm going to make a mix RGB node. Put that here. The edges is going to be our factor input because that's our mask, of course. Then I'm going to take the roughness we've created and plug that into color one and put the lines into color two and then plug this into our roughness. Now, let me unplug this from the base color as well. 
So we have just the roughness going. We don't have any color at the moment. And you can see here how we now have the lines going along the edges and also on the inside as well. Now, again, this isn't particularly realistic. And if I was doing this, I would probably use the ambient occlusion to mute out the edge mask there in the crevices. But I just wanted to show you that I do have a free pack of node tools available as well. And get edges is one of those useful ones. Again, as we change the radius here, we can increase how wide those lines come out from the edges. And again, as well, we can also change the color and values. So we can invert the line effect if we want, make it darker or make it brighter. But I'm going to keep it on a bit of a slightly bright value here. Okay, so let me make a new frame and put all of this stuff in there. So that's going to be our edge wear effect. I don't know whether it really counts as edge wear. It's just, you know, lines going along, but we'll call it that for now. And now I guess the last thing to do after we've got this is just to plug our color back in. So I've got the color over here with our mix RGB node from the AO mask. And if I plug this back into our base color, and then go and take a look again. Here we have our finished material, if I just let it calculate. So we have multiple layers of effects going on using the patterns from the procedural patterns pack. We have a grungy effect in the crevices. We have imperfections going over the surface. We've got scratches, we've got dirt. The grunge from the crevices is also growing over the roughness as well. And then we have some edge wear going on with these extra lines. And again, because this is entirely procedural and mathematically generated, we can apply it to any object. So say if I show the overlays here, let's press shift A, make a monkey head, otherwise known as Suzanne. I'm gonna scale it down, maybe press control and four to add a subsurf modifier. I'm gonna right click and shade smooth. And then let's just put it here in between our objects. Okay, so it's now sitting in there. And then if I press shift L and select my original object and then press control L and link materials, then we are now applying the material to Suzanne. So if we zoom in here, you can see how the effect is completely procedurally generating around another mesh. So I think this looks really cool. So again, all the color values, everything else can be completely changed to your liking. So that's a demonstration of how you can make complex procedural materials by using different masks and combining them together. And of course, again, if you want to take advantage of my procedural patterns pack, then you can pick it up on Gumroad for a few dollars. So just to note, there's a variety of complexity here. Some of them are really simple, like just the basic dirt one. It's just a Musgrave texture with the right values. Some of them are much more complex. So for example, the complex one, I won't show you the entire tree, but like there's a lot more going on. So there's a variety of techniques here with a variety of optimizations, should we say. So if you do pick it up, I hope you have fun with it. And if you do make any cool materials inspired by this video, then feel free to show me. Just tag me in your work. So yeah, I hope you had fun. Feel free to check out my other videos. Maybe subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, you know, do all the usual stuff. Maybe even support me on Patreon or join our Discord server. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone. Stay safe and I will see you next time.